Pressures growing on President Biden to drop charges against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who's been jailed in Britain since his arrest in April of 2019. The Biden administration's asking the UK government to extradite him to the US, where he faces up to 175 years in prison on espionage and hacking charges if he's found guilty at trial. WikiLeaks says Assange could be extradited within weeks. Assange was first arrested 12 years ago this month, on December 7, 2010. After a period under house arrest, he lived in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, where he had political asylum from 2012 to 2019. Five major news organizations, including The New York Times, which once partnered with WikiLeaks, recently called on the Biden administration to drop charges against Assange, writing, quote, "...this indictment sets a dangerous precedent and threatens to undermine America's First Amendment and the freedom of the press," unquote. The letter goes on to say, "...publishing is not a crime." The letter was signed by The New York Times, The Guardian in Britain, Le Monde in France, Der Spiegel in Germany, and El País in Spain. Meanwhile, Pentagon Papers whistleblower Daniel Ellsberg recently revealed he was in possession of confidential documents containing evidence of U.S. war crimes leaked by former military analyst Chelsea Manning and given to him as backup by WikiLeaks. In a recent message to President Biden and the Justice Department, Ellsberg wrote on Twitter, quote, I'm as indictable as he is on the exact same charges, unquote. The founder of the website Cryptome.org has also written to the Justice Department, asking to be indicted as well. Cryptome's founder, John Young, says he should be added as a co-defendant in the prosecution of Assange because he published some of the same leaked government documents at the center of the U.S. case against Assange. Cryptome is a website that began in 1996 and is seen by many as a precursor to WikiLeaks. Young also helped Assange start WikiLeaks in 2006. When Assange, while Assange faces 175 years in U.S. prison if he's extradited and convicted, the U.S. government has never moved to prosecute Young, who says he published the unredacted State Department cables two days prior to WikiLeaks. The U.S. government has never even asked Young to remove the documents. Well, today in a Democracy Now! exclusive, we're joined by both Pentagon Papers whistleblower Dan Ellsberg in Berkeley, California, and Cryptome's John Young here in New York. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Dan Ellsberg, let's begin with you. Why don't you lay out what you're asking the Justice Department to do? I'm asking them to look closely at the charges they have brought against actually past whistleblowers, all past, and uh, Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange, potentially against me and John Young. Because, as lawyers said at the time of my first trial back in 1971, uh, Melville Nimmer, the leading scholar of uh, law of information at that point, said that if the Espionage Act were used against someone who had done what I had admittedly done, copy and distribute 7,000 pages of top secret documents, that law was unconstitutional. And that's been true ever since. It's unconstitutional used against sources, as it has been done several dozen times, especially in this century, under Presidents Obama and Trump and now Biden. It's also unconstitutional used against journalists. That's blatantly unconstitutional. Uh, the, uh, they never tried it, even under President Obama, when President Biden was vice president. They backed off because of the clear unconstitutionality under the First Amendment, which says no law should be passed abridging freedom of the press. And finally, uh, by raising this constitutional issue that I focus on in particular, I'm showing that the law can be used absurdly, at least absurdly broadly, against someone like me, who admittedly retained and failed to deliver. These are the words of 18 U.S.C. 793, paragraph E. And I know that so well as a non-lawyer, I'm a defendant, because I was the first person charged with that for giving information to the public. So 
I am as guilty in their eyes as Assange. How come they haven't come after me for this? I did much the same a year ago and raised this challenge. If the, at last, the media <laughs> who have been derelict in informing themselves on a law which was always potentially there to indict them, if they do this and uh, really raise the uh, issue of the necessity to abandon or strongly amend the Espionage Act uh, so as to exclude journalists and exclude whistleblowers who are trying to inform the American public, uh, they can, if they uh, want to continue as they are, they can come after me, which means anyone who retains a copy of the New York Times, which has the word classified in it, and who fails to turn over that copy to authorities authorized to receive it, mail it in to the uh, Justice Department, I guess, is as guilty as I am under the plain language, language of that act. A British-type official secrets act is barred from America after our revolution by the First Amendment of the United States, freedom of the press. They don't have that. Since my prosecution, the Justice Department has been using the Espionage Act, intended obviously for entirely different reasons, spies who secretly give information to America's enemies, especially in wartime. They've been using it as if it were an official secrets act. If they succeed with Julian Assange in extraditing him, which Biden could stop tomorrow and should, if they succeed in that, prosecute him and convict him, we will not have the First Amendment, it's as if we didn't fight a war of independence, actually, with respect to anything they regarded as related to national defense. Free speech is pretty much out the door. And I want to raise the issue that the act is even promotes the possibility of uh, prosecuting people like me who do not even publish. I was a backup for Julian Assange, didn't have to publish. But... Uh, uh, can get anybody who handles that material, any secretary at the newspaper, and any reader of the New York Times. John Young, uh, Dan Ellsberg is perhaps the most famous whistleblower in the world in releasing the Pentagon Papers. Um, you are not as well known. You founded Cryptome.org back in the 90s. Explain why you are saying, if Julian Assange is guilty, you should be jailed as well. But it's pretty clear, looking at the indictment of Julian Assange and the 18 citations that he's charged, as far as I could tell, all those apply to me and Krypton, that um, we've been doing this now since 1996. We published classified information, secret information uh, from other countries within the United States. Um, and so that I'm unclear why, if they're charging him, why they've never charged someone like us. By the way, we're only one of dozens of people who are putting out this kind of information from the Federation of American Scientists to the National Security Archive. This has been going on for quite a long while. So our sense is that they're trying to use Assange as an example to frighten people. That, to me, is selective vindication against him, and he should not face this alone. I think all of those of us who are doing a similar kind of work to serve the public rather than the government should do more than just protest. I think we've got to raise more hell and take more legal action and publish more um, and as our obligation as citizens that I think the intelligence agencies are completely out of control. The national security people are completely out of control. They're actually trying to use Assange as a threat against everyone else, not only in the U.S., but around the world. And this does seem to be anti-democratic, and we'd like to help uh, combat that by sharing the responsibility that uh, Mr. Ellsberg and Julian Assange is facing. And we hope others will step up as well. By the way, we're not publishers. We're private citizens, practicing architects. And so we are not doing anything more than exerting our constitutional rights under the First Amendment. So this accusation against Assange uh, would be illegal against an American citizen. So we think it's selective prosecution and it should cease. 
Um, on Monday, you filed this motion against the U.S. government for violating your constitutional rights to provide unlimited documents to the public. Now, specifically in the case of Julian Assange, you say you published at Cryptome.org two days before WikiLeaks did State Department cables. Explain. You're saying the same thing that WikiLeaks revealed. And so you are guilty of the same crime. Yes, except we don't see that as a crime. It's just revelation of privileged information. Uh, we don't see it as criminal. We see it as free speech. And uh, it's all a citizen has to work with if they're not part of the press is to speak up and take responsibility for their views. So that's why we did it, is that it was available thought it was worthwhile for the public to know. It's been there now for 12 years, hundreds of downloads, no complaint from the U.S. government against us. Um, I wanted to ask you, John Young, the U.K. Crown Prosecution Service responded to your request to be included as a co-defendant. What did they say? They said that the prosecution service is not the one to take this up with. They said it's the U.S. government which is handling this, and they are just a minor party to it. So they basically disavowed responsibility for this um, vindictive attack on Julian Assange, which I thought was interesting. So they're actually acting as a hand servant to the U.S. government, is what they're saying. Dan Ellsberg, um, if Julian Assange were extradited, he would go to trial here. If convicted, he faces up to 175 years in prison. Talk about what you think that trial would look like. I presume that his lawyers would begin, would raise the constitutional issue right at the beginning. Here's something that I think is never gone public, but I've been well aware of it. The legal aid to my judge facing these same charges 50 years ago uh, told me many years later, decades later, that his recommendation would, was to Judge Byrne that uh, he's now a law professor or even retired, I believe, that his recommendation was that the our defense brief that this prosecution was manifestly unconstitutional and that the Espionage Act should be rescinded as unconstitutional right at that, should be followed. And it was his understanding that uh, Matthew Byrne, my judge, agreed with that, but it was Byrne's first case. And to rule a major piece of legislation like the Espionage Act unconstitutional in the first days of his first case was something he didn't want to take on. So he took that under advisement to judge on it at the end of the trial. And since the trial ended before, just before it went to the jury, or he made his closing comments because of governmental crimes against me that had just been revealed, crimes, by the way, that have been now revealed to be committed exactly against Julian Assange. These were crimes that led to the dismissal of all charges against me, as they should have. Uh, he was Assange, like me, was illegally surveilled. In his case, even his lawyers and his doctor's discussions were surveilled. And efforts, discussions were made of kidnapping and killing him or poisoning, just as a dozen CIA assets were brought up from Miami on May 3rd, 1973, by President Nixon with orders to incapacitate Daniel Ellsberg totally whatever that means. But uh, obviously, Assange should be uh, let out for that. The lawyers will undoubtedly move to introduce that evidence as well, uh, if, their if their constitutional argument is still being under advisement. That argument has, by the way, never been addressed by the Supreme Court. The classification system rests on no legislation. It's an executive branch set of regulations like the non-disclosure agreements in any corporation or union or uh, uh, whatever private group. Uh, no legislation backs it but uh, as a government regulation. But the uh, First Amendment does keep the government from enacting acts that would limit speech to that extreme uh, extent. Then, while all perhaps this is pending, maybe they have that under advisement, and the acts that should end his 
uh, prosecution uh, of uh, listening in in his bathroom uh, in case he went into there for private discussions with his lawyers. Uh, and all that went to the CIA. That should end the trial. If it continues, then I presume he will very strong, I am certain he will plead not guilty, not with respect to the facts, which uh, I stipulated entirely. I did what I did. But uh, to the very point that John Young made a moment ago, if I may say, correcting you, Amy, uh, we were not admitting to, and Julian would not be admitting to any crime and would not feel that he made any crime any more than I did. He had uh, violated regulations which put into criminal law constitute a constitutional violation of his rights and of the possibility of democracy. So we were pleading not guilty on the grounds that we had violated no constitutional law. Um, I, there I be wanted a lot to, of discussion of the facts. Dan, I wanted to read from the joint open letter from The New York Times, The Guardian, Le Monde of France, Der Spiegel of Germany and El País of Spain, who wrote against the prosecution of Julian Assange under the Espionage Act, saying it, quote, sets a dangerous precedent that threatens to undermine the First Amendment and the freedom of the press, quote, obtaining and disclosing sensitive information when necessary in the public interest is a core part of the daily work of journalists. If that work is criminalized, our public discourse and our democracies are made significantly weaker. It continues, holding governments accountable is part of the core mission of a free press and a democracy. Um, uh, can you talk about having the Pentagon Papers, published uh, by The New York Times uh, decades ago, Dan Ellsberg, what it means to have The Times and these other major papers in the world uh, demanding the Biden administration drop this case, and whether you've heard from the Biden administration. Well, I'm very happy that The Times, El País, Le Monde, the Guardian and the, uh, the other El País, Le Monde, The Guardian, Times. I'm missing somebody there. Spiegel. Um, Spiegel, to Spiegel, have all finally realized the foreign ones that they can be extradited, just like Julian, our Australian, who happened to be in England, and he's being extradited for this. Meaning that any one of those editors uh, is as indictable as he is on exactly the same charges. And uh, there are secretaries on the charges that could be brought against me of holding this material, not delivering it up, not telling the FBI, et cetera. So they finally realized what I've been telling them for 50 years, literally since my trial, uh, without success. And that is that the plain language of this act applies to them as well as to their sources and to their readers, as a matter of fact, or to anybody who handles this information. They paid no attention for 50 years. To my knowledge, none of those papers ever lifted a finger for any of their sources, their legal processes, or anything. They don't seem to regard sources as any responsibility there's, even if they've gotten a Pulitzer Prize for those efforts. So uh, no, no effort to the defense, no nothing, nor have they informed themselves about the law. Well, for decades, I, they probably saw me as crying wolf. There hadn't yet been a case against a journalist, although the language was right there to do it. If, if a president came along and a Justice Department uh, that was prepared to experiment with using it more broadly against the journalist. Well, finally, that happened under under Trump, and they have suddenly come to realize that he's right against now extradition and a court case which will raise these issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm I'm trying to point out to them that it can go even further. Uh, uh, I had all of the material that Julian Assange had uh, from Chelsea Manning. I did not publish it because I was a backup and the newspapers ended up publishing it, except, by the way, Amy, for a particularly atrocious attack, a video and report on Gorani in, um, in the Middle East War that killed over 100 women and children. And although it was known the, uh, that it happened, the report and the video of that, like the collateral murder video of the killing of, of uh, civilians in Iraq, was held. Uh, it may not even have been classified as the collateral murder wasn't classified, but that doesn't mean it wasn't held closely. 
Chelsea got it only under and she saw it initially. It was very moved by it. She says in her wonderful book, Read Me, I just read that, and uh, describes the impact of seeing that. Uh, Carrie says much more than just reading words about it. But I had that at the time, but I didn't know it. It was among 100,000 documents, and I was merely retaining and uh, any discussion of what to do about them would await if it was blocked otherwise. I didn't realize, I didn't know about the Guarani video, which we've been trying to get now. There's a Freedom of Information Act request for 12 years that hasn't gotten anywhere. But you and I discussed that when we heard about the attack and that it was had not been released for reasons we didn't know. Turns out it's still too enciphered. By the way, President Biden has no problem in uh, disclosing it any day, and he should that should have done that. Trump the same, Obama the same. It's been 12 years, and we discussed it here uh, on Democracy Now. I, but the questions all still remain. Before we end the segment, we just have 30 seconds. But John Young, founder of Cryptome.org, you still have these documents up. Um, that in, on Cryptome.org that Julian Assange um, has been charged for at WikiLeaks? Yes. Are you going to take them down? No. Has the government in asked fact, you I'd to? Just like to? I'd just like to make a kind of a quip here that I think that this whole thing is, might be called espionage theater. I think the intelligence agencies are looking for a spectacle. In the field of cybersecurity, there's something called cybersecurity theater, which is fake threats. I think that they're, if you read these charges, they are re repetitious. They cited just a few paragraphs of Title 18. And I think that they want this trial for their own purposes. There was a hearing a few days ago in which all these intelligent people were patting each other on the back at Assange's expense. So I think the intelligent people want this spectacle to, to feather their own nest. And it's an unfair treatment of Assange for this purpose. Well, I want to thank you, John Young, for joining us, founder of Cryptome.org. And Dan Ellsberg, Pentagon Papers whistleblower, if you could stay with us, I want to ask you a question uh, about the growing threat of nuclear war. Stay with us.